Welcome to United with Christ. This is Pastor Orlando, and there is a miracle on the way for you. Listen, we are going to minister on the gifts of the Spirit, and every time you speak about the Holy Spirit, the power of God is released for touching you and for healing. Do not miss it. Stay tuned. United with Christ begins now. United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. I am so glad you are tuning in for this very special program from Life TV to your home. You better get ready because the Lord is going to speak to you. And I am believing with you that there is a miracle on the way. You have a prayer request, you have a situation, you have a need, and you want to bring it before the Lord. The number on the screen, 915-532-8518, is ready to go. Don't wait until the end. You can actually call the number and receive prayer. And at the end of the program, I will be praying for you for that miracle that you're asking for. We are going to continue our series on the gifts of the Spirit. I'm very excited about this as we explore the importance of discovering and also allowing yourself to be used by God through the gifts. So get your Bibles ready. Call somebody. Get a note and pen and pencil if you can. And make notes because this teaching is very important. And speaking about the gifts, I want to take just a few minutes to talk about something that happened to me just this morning as I was using the gift of tongues. Now listen, I speak in tongues. I once spoke to a pastor of a very big denomination that they do not believe in the gifts of tongues. And um, he said to me, look, Pastor Orlando, the only thing we need to do is that we have to overlook what 1 Corinthians 14 says because Paul does speak about the gift, the gift of tongues in different ways. And the fact of the matter is that there is no losing ground. If you were to pursue the gifts of the Spirit, you will never miss anything to the contrary, as I'm going to show you in the next few minutes, the Bible says that when God's people are willing and able and they know how to operate in the gifts, there is profit. So this is going to be a teaching that I'm excited about to share with you. What happened to me this morning during prayer, however, I was praying in tongues. That's the prayer language. You know, there are different types of tongues. There is a personal prayer language which the Apostle Paul speaks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. There is also the, uh, the tongues that can be interpreted in the same chapter of 1 Corinthians. Paul speaks about speaking in tongues when there is interpretation to edify the church. And of course, there are the tongues that are very rare today that the Bible speaks about those in Acts chapter 2. When the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in other tongues as, as the Spirit, the Bible says, gave them utterance. That is a kind of language that the Holy Spirit can bring about when somebody needs to hear the gospel in their language and there's somebody there that does not speak the language of that recipient. That is the third type of tongue. But I'm talking about the prayer language. Here's what happened. I think the Lord has a word for some of you as you listen to this testimony. And again, if you call the number on the screen, you don't have to wait for the end of the program. I will be praying for you for a miracle today. But do not wait. Just call the number on the screen and let us know how we can pray for you. I was praying in tongues when suddenly, this, this is very early this morning, in my closet, in my prayer closet, when suddenly I begin to have an image of myself kneeling the way I was kneeling actually on my closet, but I was on top of a page from the Bible. This is, um, this is a, it's called a similitude. There, there are visions and dreams, but there are similitudes are images that when you're praying, you begin to see an image of something, and it's a live image. I'm going to explain that to you. 
As I am seeing myself, I'm speaking in tongues, in my mind, in my mind, I begin to see an image of myself um, kneeling on top of a, a page of the Bible. And as I am exploring and speaking in tongues, remember, and speaking mysteries to God, my mind is already focusing on this image and trying to figure what scripture is that I'm kneeling on. And I found it to be the letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter, uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and on, when the Apostle Paul speaks and tells Timothy that above all things, he's commanding all men to pray. And he mentions different kinds of prayer, thanksgiving, but there is, there is one type of prayer that brought to my attention in this vision, and that is I'm looking at the section of these verses, 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, where it says, to pray for all who are in preeminence, people who are in high positions, kings, and, and of course for us that means presidents and, and people in Congress and senators, people who are in positions of power. As I'm focusing on this scripture, I stopped and I began to, what I believe, to receive an illumination because a revelation is what the Bible says. Illumination is what the Spirit will lighten for us to see. What I am seeing as I am praying in tongues, I'm praying in tongues in my mind and I'm focusing on this image. I'm looking at the text where Paul speaks about praying for those who are in power so that we may live a peaceable life, a life of peace where the gospel can be spread without persecution and without war, etc., etc., etc. And what brought my attention, what the Lord brought to my attention was that the Lord is asking us to pray because, look, he says, if you pray for leaders who are in power, people who are making decisions for us, who have the power to drive the nation into peace or war, when we are not praying, we are allowing these forces to take hold and to have authority and to be successful. As I am praying in tongues and focusing on this part of the verse, remember I'm kneeling on a, what it looks like a page of the Bible. I'm now discovering that this is 1 Timothy chapter 2. You should read it. Chapter 2 beginnings, beginning in verse 1. Paul says, above all, I want all men to pray for all people, all men, those who are in power, so that we may live a life of peace. Paul doesn't like persecution. We don't pray for persecution. But I'm listening and reading and seeing this image, and I realize that here is what happens. When God's people are not praying for the people who are in power, whether you like them or not, whether they belong to your political affiliation or not, God doesn't care about that, is to pray for all who are in power. It says in the few verses below that, it is God's will for all men to come into repentance. Therefore, when people that are in power are not coming to the knowledge of the Lord, we have to question what kind uh, of prayer life is the church living in. We have to pray because if they're going to get saved, somebody has to preach the gospel to them. But the focus on this, of this image I'm watching, I'm seeing in my mind as I'm praying in tongues to the Lord, brought me to uh, this idea that I want to share with you because I think this is a calling not just for me, but for you too. When we don't pray for the people who are making decisions up there, we're asking for trouble because that means that if they're not coming into the saving knowledge of Jesus, there are spiritual forces that can lead these powerful men and women to lead the nation to a time where there is no peace. I'm not going to say too much about it because you can read a lot into it, but the point is you need to pray. Listen, I believe that the Holy Spirit is calling somebody who is watching and listening to go back to your knees, restore fasting in your life, get into the scriptures, and take some time to fast and pray and on a daily basis. I believe that Satan is trying to lead this nation to war in ways that we don't want to get there. And the Bible gives us one solution. The Bible tells us that if we pray, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 6 and on, that if we pray with holy hands for people who are in power, we can get to the point where we have peace. 
so that the gospel can spread not with persecution, but without persecution. I know persecution happens. Persecution is happening in other nations, as you know. But there is a sound of war on earth today. And I believe that Satan is looking for a people who are not praying for the people who have the power to get us there. Point, case in point, I am praying. I don't know about you, but I know when, how, and how long. Um, I'm going to take to take some fasting and praying, not for myself, but for the leadership right here in El Paso, in New Mexico, Las Cruces, Juarez, out there in Mexico, and especially for the leadership in Washington, D.C. There are forces, again, there that are trying to bring havoc into this nation, and you and your children do not want to be in that position. It is time to pray. Now, that happened to me this morning as I was praying in tongues because praying in tongues uh, activates the prophetic. You are speaking mysteries to God, and then the Holy Spirit will help your understanding because Paul says, I will pray in tongues, and I'll pray with my understanding in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You should read it. But when you pray in tongues, you should desire the gift of tongues. You should ask the Holy Spirit. Paul says, I wish all of you speak in tongues as I do. He said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. So to all of you who don't believe in this gift, I know that you teach from the teachings of Paul. What is wrong with doing what Paul asked that we can do? So look, that gift is available to you. I want to go back to the teaching, but I'm just saying as I was exercising the gift of tongue this morning, the Lord gave me a vision that I believe is for you. The Lord was asking me to pray for the leadership, that there are forces that are trying to bring this nation into a position that is going to be a historical, transformative position that we don't want to get there. It is time to pray. And if you can accompany your prayer with fasting, you will have it. The Lord is going to work better on your behalf and on behalf of the people of America, and to all of you, wherever you are, get back on your knees and pray. Now, let's go back to the teaching on the gifts. I want to give you some spiritual principles. I want to encourage you um, about asking for the Lord to move in your life with the gifts of the Spirit. Remember, the prayer line is open, 915-532-8518. Call now and send us your prayer request. I will be praying for that miracle at the end. Of the program, but again, listen when you begin to speak about the Holy Spirit and the word about the Holy Spirit and the gifts, there is power that is released, and God wants to touch you today and He wants to use you. Look, I know we live in a time where people are comfortable going to church and sitting and worshiping and then they go home, but that is not completely what church is about. Now, let's give you some principles from the scriptures. Are you ready? Proverbs chapter 17, verse 8 says, A gift, listen to me, Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 8 says, A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of its possessor. Wherever he turns, he prospers. I'm saying to you this principle because the Bible says that spiritual gifts are a currency of spiritual profit exchange. Let me repeat it to you. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of its possessor. Wherever he turns, he prospers. Listen, gifts will bring prosperity into your life. If you compare this verse with 1 Corinthians 12, 7, look what the Bible says. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each and every one for the profit of all. When you live and when you allow the Holy Spirit to use you with the gifts, you will become profitable to the body of Christ and the body of Christ will become profitable to you. There is nothing wrong with the gifts. I know that there is being mishandling of the gifts. But that doesn't mean you throw the gifts because somebody did something wrong with the gifts they have because that happens everywhere with any other things. So do not reject the gifts. Let me give you another principle from 1 Corinthians 12, 7 that the Greek word manifestation of the Spirit is the word panerosis that refers to an act of making something visible, evident, or known. So the Holy Spirit wants to make his gifts evident 
and manifesting and visible and known to you. This is something that is tangible that you can have, that you can use, and that the Lord wants you to have for the edifying of the body of Christ. Here's his principle from Proverbs 18, verse 1, 6. Proverbs 18, 6 declares that God uses the spiritual gifts to open doors for us. Watch this. A man gives, makes room for him, and brings him before kings. I'm going to repeat it again. You might have a different version. Proverbs 18, 16 declares, A man's gifts make room for him and brings him before kings. Your gift will open doors for you. Your gifts will open doors for you, and you have them if you have Jesus in your heart. Number three, watch this. It is not God's will for his children to be ignorant of the spiritual matters because in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, the Bible says, concerning spiritual gifts, and I told you that the word uh, there is a different Greek word that Paul uses in the next, in the next uh, few verses. The word gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 is the word pneumaticum. It refers to pneuma, spirit, or air, it refers to spiritual matters, not gifts, as Paul will describe uh, following. I do not want you to be ignorant. The church of the Corinthians, they were, the Bible says that they were filled with all kinds of gifts. We'll go there in another time. But it is not God's will that you ignore your gifts. You have between 5 and 30, 3 zero, between 5 and 30 gifts. That's why in my teachings about the gifts that I do, for the Oral Roberts University Bible Institute. And by the way, if you want to partake and be a part of that course, I'm imparting beginning March 2nd, just get a hold of me, contact me, I will tell you. It's at 801 North Mesa, March 2nd, 9, 16, and 23. I'm going to be teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. And there is a test that you can take, a couple that will tell you what is your position in the church that God is calling you to, and what are your gifts. And you will find that you have between 5 and 30, the majority reach up to 15 gifts. And you need to know this because the Bible says that your gifts will make room for you. The Bible says that your gift will prosper you. And the Bible says that your gift will edify the church. And Paul says you should not be ignorant of the gifts. Now, why? If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, Paul says that when you were ignorant, you were... Uh, Taking captive, in other words, people who don't understand their giftings that are not allowing themselves to be instruments of the Holy Spirit, to be used to build the church and to edify others, can fall into deception and they lack spiritual growth. And healthy sheep, healthy Christians grow. You need to grow and the gifts will provide that growth to you. Just a few minutes away from Praying for you, I want you to call and keep calling. Send your prayer request. Tell us how we can pray for you. Call the number on your screen. Just a few more minutes and we'll pray together. Now, <clears throat> on the positive side, the Bible says that when you operate in the gifts, these things will happen to you. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. This is how the church of the Corinthians understood the gifts. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, says Paul, verse 5, that you were enriched in everything by him with all utterance and all knowledge. That's uh, spiritual science, spiritual knowledge, uh, spiritual knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, verse 7, so that you come short in no gift. The church of the Corinthians, they lack no gifts. All of the gifts that Paul's, uh, Paul mentions in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians were present experiences in the church of the Corinthians. Their problem is that they were delivering these gifts without love, which Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians 13. He's saying, Desire the gifts, but deliver the gifts with love. And then in 14, he says, and don't forget to prophesy. So you need in your life three things. God's love, the gifts, and to be able to prophesy, which means you are able to convey the word of God in a way that people can understand it. Then Paul says, you come short in no gifts, eagerly awaiting for the revelation of Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Watch this. These things were present in the church of the Corinthians. Number one, the church was enriched in everything with all utterance and spiritual knowledge. Number two, the Corinthians had the testimony of Christ confirmed in the church. Three, the church of the Corinthians lacked no gifts. Four, the church was awaiting the coming of the Lord. And number five, there is sanctification because the Bible says that the Lord will confirm them and keep them, uh, keep them holy, into the holy towards the coming of the Lord. Number six, people in the church of the Corinthians were experiencing fellowship with Jesus. In other words, when the Holy Spirit is allowed to flow in your life, blessings are coming your way. <laughs> you need to ask <clears throat> what the Apostle Paul declares in 1 Corinthians 12, 31. Watch this. It says, it, is, it, it says, but earnestly desire the best gifts. Earnestly, that means have a passion, be zealous for it. You want to flow in the gifts of the Spirit because they are for you. In fact, you already have them inside of you because you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. If you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, my friend, my brother, and my sister, there are at least five to 30 gifts in your life. And then the Apostle Paul, and I will finish with this so we can pray together. In verse 7, he says, The panerosis of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to all. What do you mean all, Pastor Orlando? That means you and me and every person who has received the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And if you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, it is time to do it. Do it today in Jesus' name. All you need to do is confess him as Savior. Find a church where you can grow and God will begin to touch your life even more. Watch this. In verse 8 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says, For to one is given the word of wisdom. So look. Just to pray together, let me, and please call the number on your screen. A few more minutes, we'll pray together. Look what it says. The word of wisdom, verse 8, verse 8. Um, the word of knowledge, faith by the same spirit, gifts of healings, plural, healings in plural, not just a gift of healing, plural, gifts of healings by the same spirit, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, interpretation of tongues, by one and the same Spirit. All of these nine gifts of the manifestations of the Spirit are available to you just for the asking. So listen, I want to pray today first that God is going to show you how to develop and discover your gifts, that God is going to show you which is your position in the church, and that the Lord is going to show you how you can be a vessel that God can use for His glory. The gifts are available to you if you have Jesus in your heart and the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. The Bible says that all you need to do is desire the best gifts, ask for them, and the Lord will grant them to you. Four minutes before we finish, if you're calling, don't stop calling. Let's just pray together in the name of Jesus. If you have a sickness or a disease, a special need that you want to present before the Lord, just stretch out your hand. I have no power, but the power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Connect with me in faith from the studio. We are connecting with you through the power of prayer. We believe that the Holy Spirit is listening. God is watching. The Lord wants to touch you in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you illuminate, that you give clarity to those watching and listening. Wherever they are, in the name of Jesus, bring your people back to the Holy Spirit. Bring your people back to prayer. Be, bring your people back to fasting. Bring your people back to fervency in the Holy Spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bring the people back to the church, to reading the scriptures, to wanting to be together. Father God, forgive us for being so cold about the things of the Spirit in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that you impart clarity and wisdom so that people discover their, their best gifts that you have for them in Jesus' name. If, if you are sick, if you need a healing, stretch out your hands in the same way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke COVID. 
I rebuke cancer. I rebuke headaches. I rebuke problems with the knees. In Jesus' name, there is a woman, you're wearing a red shirt. You have a problem in your back, in your lower back. In the name of Jesus, I declare healing in your life. Somebody, somebody's eyes problem. In Jesus' name, be healed. In the name of Jesus, somebody has a neck problem right here. You are a man. You're wearing a brown, a set of brown pants. Your shoes are black. In Jesus' name, receive healing in the name of Jesus. My God, I feel the Holy Spirit. You know, when you speak about the gifts of the Spirit, power is released. I pray for healing in your life. Somebody needs a job. In Jesus' name, the Bible says your gift will make room for you and bring you before kings. I declare that you stand up in Jesus' name. Receive your healing. Receive your miracle in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Don't stop uh, calling the number on the screen. On the next program, please keep calling. Let the station know what God has done for you and give us your prayer request. Somebody will be praying for you as well on the next show, so don't miss it. Remember, this is Pastor Orlando, United with Christ. Jesus is alive in El Paso. Jesus is alive in the studio. And Jesus is alive in your life. Go back to the closet of prayer. Go back to the Bible. Go back to the scriptures. And you will see the power of God being released to you and from you in the name of Jesus. Remember, if you're interested in taking part of my course on discovering your gifts, it is going to be at 801 North Mesa, coming up March the 2nd, 9, 16, and 23rd. When you complete that course with me, you will receive the Certificate of Continuing Education issued by the Oral Roberts University Bible Institute out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I was also a student. I have two degrees from there, and I can tell you these courses will change your life. But the most important thing is not the certificate. The most important thing is that you need to return to knowing how God wants to use you. Listen, God wants to use you. There are gifts in your life. The church needs you to edify the church. Pastors cannot do, it, do anything by themselves. We need to go back to the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. The best is yet to come. Remember, Jesus loves you very much. Bye-bye and bye-bye.